Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. So, success. Um, our epoxy is cured there overnight. It's had a 16 hour cure right now. Just getting back in here. And, you know, there you go. It's crunchy. And uh, there you go. That's your, uh, that's your cured epoxy. So, we know that that's good. We're not sticky. We're snapping away there. So that's all good. So today, what I'm gonna do here this morning is I'm gonna give this a sand down. We're gonna get an idea of where we're gonna go with this. And I'm gonna prep a few other areas here now. We're gonna expand our work area now that we know that we have a solid fix. And we're just gonna look at basically expanding this repair area so it's going to cover a larger area so that we know it's 100% solid and we don't have to worry about that you know delaminator and coming out not that I really think that we have to that's pretty solid but I rather make sure that uh, we're 110% versus having to come back and do a repair down the road so we got a few other areas on here that I got to go over and uh, it's just going to be a bunch of sanding and prep work here this morning. And one thing though, I want to show you on the back corner. And this is interesting and something for you to pay attention to. It's not the first time this has happened to me, but uh, I do want to point this out. So let's get reset up here in the back corner and we'll talk some more about it. Okay, so here we are, back corner. This is where I've put my extra epoxy and whatever else. This was through the hull, the same as up here and right in, up into the styrofoam. So it's gonna be really hard for you to see here, but there's a pinhole right there and it that extends from the G-Flex that we have on the inside. And when I was putting epoxy on this yesterday, you could see the pinhole. So what does this mean? Could be water trapped in behind here. Uh, could be oil, grease, or something like that that's back in there, either from inside the hull or something. So, basically, if you sand this down and try finishing it and everything else, that hole's probably going to come back through. And you're not going to see it, you know, through the rest of your stages. But when you go to spray your paint, that's going to become a problem. And, you know, that's the last stage that you want to be having problems like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my burr die grinder and I'm just going to burp that right in there. We're going to clean that out. We're going to see what's going on. Uh, give it a good wipe down, make sure there's no moisture, no water in there. And then if all's good, I'm just going to come back in with some uh, epoxy uh, later on. And we're just going to jam it up in there and we're going to see if that cures our problem. So um, if there is water or anything in there, uh, the best, easiest thing to do is either A, Get in there and try to cut that foam out. We don't really want to do that because that's kind of our backer. So the other thing that you could do then is to put a heat gun, you know, far enough away from it where the heat's still going to do something but not close enough that's going to cause any damage and just let the heat gun work for as long as it takes basically to uh, dry that out for you and then you can throw some epoxy on that right away and you should be good. So that's probably gonna be one of the first things I do here this morning, get that set up. I have another little spot right here that I gotta do. And I'm gonna start sanding down on our big area here and start getting prepped for some fairing compound and everything in some other areas. What, I, what my plan is, is to get these bigger areas cleaned up and prepped so that we can mix up another batch of thickened epoxy. And we're gonna fair that in with thickened epoxy just because there is, you know, some damage into the structure and then I want to get my other areas done so that we can start doing some pairing compound on the smaller scratches and damage and everything else and start getting prepped that way. So plan A is to do some sanding. Uh, step B here is going to be to get everything prepped out, everything washed down again with some alcohol. Uh, step C, we're going to mix up some epoxy and we're going to do our big areas. And then step D today is going to be, we're going to lay up some fairing compound then on some smaller areas. And then basically we walk away. That's going to be uh, as much as we're able to do today. There'll be no more sanding and everything until the epoxy is all cured. So that'll be today's Friday 
already. So I don't think I'll be in here on the weekend, who knows. But uh, worst case scenario is when I come back in Monday morning, we get to go sanding again. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. Um, so that being said, time to get to work. So we'll see you on the flip side. All right, so uh, I'm sure you saw that in action. So the tool I'm using here, it's the Fest Tool RO150 FEQ. It's a great little unit, uh, dust collector and everything else that's attached to it, as you can see here. Um, 
works really well. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper on this because I don't want to be here all day sanding, but I don't want to make more work than I have to either. So I've prepped this up and we actually did very well with our layup here. Uh, we have a low spot here and a couple throughout, but nothing really too big. It's a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. So we do have some filling to do down here, as you can see, and then same as up here. There's about the same, basically. I know that's hard to see on the camera, you probably can't see it, but anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead here, I'm gonna remove this decal. I do have measurements up here already of where it has to go back and I want to be careful not to remove those. So I'm just going to remove this because we do have to come up here quite a bit actually to get that to level out for us and down here we're pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and prep all that. Uh, I'm going to do a few other spots that I have to do um, just for the sake of ease and everything else. I'm sure you guys know how to sand. And again, it's not rocket science, but the more you sand, the more filler you usually have to put in. So, you know, it's a love-hate thing. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and do all this off camera. Uh, it's gonna be a lot easier for me than having to worry about knocking the camera over and uh, it'll be a little bit quicker. So we'll come back after I get everything sanded and prepped. And then by then we should be ready to do our epoxy filler where we have to do that, and then we'll be able to lay up some fairing compound then too. So when we come back, should be a whole different picture. So welcome back here, and we're all sanded up here now. I got my game plan in place. So we're gonna be doing three different layups here right now. So in this area here, I'm gonna be mixing up a epoxy batch with Cavacil and with some fibers, uh, chopped up fibers. And because in this area right about here, we have about a quarter inch basically. And like to build up. So what the chopped fibers are gonna do is it's going to give us more strength. It's gonna tie this repair into the rest of the hull basically. And the epoxy is gonna help that out obviously. So that's going to give us a repair area basically about yay. And you can see here where I traced out where I need to use that filler and get, just to give me an idea of where I'm working. So that's going to be that layup. Uh, the next layup is I do have some other spots at the front and they're similar to this here where we're not rubbed through the entire material, but we still need some structural strength. So with that, we're just going to do an epoxy layup with Cavacil again to thicken that up. And that'll be more than strong for what we're doing up there. And then we have all underneath here now, basically we have what we call road rash or river rock rash, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be coming in down here and we're going to be using our fairing compound. Now you can mix up a fairing compound with the epoxy. <sighs> epoxy is not gonna be as easy to sand. Um, so we have a very large area down here and it's a lot of little nicks and scratches and stuff like that that we gotta fill up. So we're gonna be using a fairing compound and it's, I do believe, and we'll confirm this when, when we get over there, it's a one-to-one -one, uh, fairing compound by Total Boat. And I started using this a couple of years ago and wow, the sandability of it is awesome. It, uh, it's, it's so nice to work with. I, unless you've ever worked with polyester based fairing compounds or epoxy, whenever you get into this stuff and it's an epoxy based, but it's awesome to work with. So if you got a large area, large area or a lot of sanding to do, I highly recommend spending the money and getting that product from Total Boat and uh, I'll show you it whenever we get over there to do it. But step one here is we're going to do our uh, chopped fiber mix with the epoxy. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do that up. Uh, step two then we're going to do our epoxy and cabosil mix for our other areas such as this at the front and one here at the back. 
And then step three, we're gonna lay up our epoxy fairing compound and we're gonna do all of our, you know, small scratches and everything else. And this is gonna be the first coat for that. And why we're doing, you know, three different things here today is because we're working in different areas. And because once you lay the epoxy on here, that's it for the day, right? So we're gonna try to, you know, maximize our day here because we're able to today. And we're gonna lay up as much as we can so that the next time we, that we come back to this, we're back to sanding right away. It's just time management basically. And uh, this works and again, you lay this up if you gotta walk away or step away, nothing says you have to go and do everything. It's just, I have the available time right now and this is the way we're gonna do it so that when we come back to sand, we're gonna sand the entire work area again and then we'll go back and you know, add more filler or whatever we need from there. So with that being said, I'll meet you back on the bench and we're gonna start mixing up our chopped fiber mixture.